Good evening, everyone, and welcome into Kraft Stadium here in Elida, where tonight a WBL matchup between the Elida Bulldogs, who come in 1-0, and and the Wapakoneta Redskins with an identical 1-0 record. I'm Dan Hearn, along with Paul Sadler. And, Paul, this is the second game of the season for these two teams, but a highly anticipated matchup between a couple of teams that have been the class of the WBL the last couple of years. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, both teams had, you know, some of the best seasons in school history last year, which we'll talk more during the broadcast. But just as importantly, both teams come in here with WBL championship aspirations. The Wapakoneta Redskins won the toss and elected two to first, so they will kick it off to Jason Carpenter's offense. The Elida Bulldogs coming off a 30-7 and seven win last week, a game where they dominated Piqua. Uh, Piqua didn't have a first down in the first half. And we'll see if their defense can contain the Redskins tonight. The opening kickoff fielded near the 20-yard line and brought back by Poling. He bounces off one tackle and up across the 35 in good starting field position for the Bulldogs. Yeah, and that's a name we're going to talk about a lot. Uh, Quentin Poling, uh, the Ohio University Bobcat commit, a two-way player for Elida. So the Bulldogs will start out at the 37-yard line. And let's go ahead and take a look at the starting lineup, at the starting offensive line for this Bulldog team. Okay, starting on uh, the offensive line is actually a mix of uh, young and experienced player. Nikolai Sackinger is the only returnee uh, starter as a senior. Otherwise, you have three sophomores and a freshman, Jared Blimer, Tristan Edwards at center, Brandon Kahn, and Ryan Simpson at guards. Clark Etzler will work out of the shotgun. He'll have two receivers to his left, one to the near side on the right. And he puts pulling in motion to the near side. And the first snap goes off his hands, and he'll be lucky to recover it back at the 24-yard line. Yeah, not the way you want to start off into a big game. You know, kind of a high snap there uh, by Tristan Edwards. You know, that's the freshman, you know, in his first WBL snap. Uh, obviously, he just probably has a little nerves out there, Dan. So that'll push the Bulldogs back to the 25-yard line and bring up a second down and 23. And Etzler, again, working out of the shotgun. Last week, 18 of 24, 151 yards passing through for two touchdown passes and ran for another one. Fakes the handoff here and tries to carry up the middle, but nothing going. Good stop by the defensive line there for the Redskins. Yeah, great job right there. Nate Ballantyne stepped right in there and made the play. Uh, great start here for the Wapakoneta de defense. The skill players for Elida. We'll try and look at them. But it's a third down and 23 now. And again, Etzler will work out of the shotgun. He will have Sumter on his left hip. And again, puts pulling in motion. There's the snap, he'll roll out. Under pressure again, he escapes it, and he's gonna run up the near side of the field. He'll get back close to the original line of scrimmage around the 37-yard line. And it's one of the keys of the game that Coach Fry talked about earlier this week. They really want to contain the scramble uh, by Clark Etzler. Uh, I guess in this case, though, if you're going to have him scramble, you know, third and 23 is more ideal. Even though they had a big gain, uh, it's still a fourth and 10 brings up a punt. Mm -hmm. So a good showing for the Wapakin uh, defense on there. On their first uh, trip out on the field, Alex Gravy will be back to return the kick. He stands back at the 20-yard line. And the kick is away. He's going to wave it off. It will go out of bounds just outside the 30-yard line. So the Redskins will get a chance with the ball. Let's take a look at their offensive line. They have one starter coming back from last year. Yeah, Mason Sidney, the right guard, is the only returning off a of very good uh, offensive line from last year. The rest are... Um, obviously, first-year guys, Tyler Stauffer, left tackle, um, left guard, Michael Giesich, right guard, Mason Sidney, as mentioned, right tackle, Jared Carpenter, and at center, Kyle Gonnerman. And they will be led on the field by their quarterback, senior quarterback, Kyle Gibson. Last week, 44 yards on the ground, 82 yards through the air, had a couple of touchdowns. And coming out in their spread look, which is a little bit unusual for uh, Wapakoneta. Gibson fires it over to the right side. Short pass up across the 35. But a solid gain and a first down and a nice reception and move by Cody Morgan. Cody Morgan had two catches last week uh, at the four passes that were caught. Uh, very athletic sophomore. You know, he saw some key plays down the stretch, especially on the defensive side of the ball last year as a freshman. 
So out comes Wapak again on the first down of 10 and again out of the gun. And again over the middle, Gibson, this one across midfield to the 40, down to the 35, inside the 30, and down the right sideline, and very close to the end zone. It looks like he's going to get knocked out at about the one-yard line. Nice catch and run by Johnny Crawford. A great play right there. Uh, they ran trips to the side in the empty backfield. Uh, a little scramble there by Kyle Gibson allowed times for Crawford to, to clear open on the crossing pattern. Originally it looked like they were looking for the out and bubble screen for the other two guys, but great improvis improvisation there by Gibson and a tremendous start here for the Redskins. They have the ball first down and goal at the one yard line. And still only uh, nine minutes left in the first quarter. Gibson under center, handoff, and punching it into the end zone for the touchdown is Zach Smurgy, and we'll hear his name again tonight. Yeah, Smurgy also a two-way player for him, uh, led the team in rushing last week, and he is able to push the ball in for his uh, second touchdown of the year, and this gives an early lead here for the Redskins. Just under nine minutes left in the first quarter, and the, and the Redskins march right down the field, three plays. And Heingardner out to kick the extra point. That one is up. And it is good. And so just like that, the Redskins march down the field and put it seven on the board. Here in the first quarter with 8.56 left in the first quarter, it's the Redskins seven and a light of nothing. You're watching high school football on Game Face Ohio. So, you think just because you're from a small town, you can't have everything that the big towns have? Wrong. At TSC, we offer over 300 digital cable channels to you right here in the heart of the Midwest. Surprised? Don't be. We're TSC. No contracts, no gimmicks, and everything is straightforward and down to earth. Order your digital cable package today and the HD is free. Now you're talking smart. Back here in Elida, the Redskins put together an impressive drive on their first offensive possession. And Paul, Jason Carpenter talked to before this game about controlling the pace of this game, and that's not what he got there on that first possession. Well, surprisingly, though, that's more the pace that he'd like to Elida to play at. You know, I, I don't think he really envisioned Walpaw to come out spread the first two plays and pick it all the way down the one-yard line. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, Doug Fry teams generally are a ball control type team. They want to dominate time of possession, have a lot more plays to the line of scrimmage than their opponents. So, you know, Elida is definitely not going to panic. I think Coach Fry will take the result of that particular drive. Yeah, definitely. There's the kickoff. Sumter back across the 20, powers his way up to around the 30-yard line, and that's where Elida will start their next drive. And by the way, the ooze that you heard right there, Quentin Poling had a depleting block on that. <laughs> Those are fun to be on one end of. So on the offensive end for starters uh, for Elida, skill position, Clark Etzler has mentioned, uh, you know, his brother was a, you know, a tremendous standout last year, a wide receiver, in replacing uh, the very talented Reggie McAdams. Uh, running back, Anthony Sumter, um, number five. Quentin Pulling, at number 40, is tight end. And receivers, number seven, Brand Stitton, 22, Deshea Hughes, and 85, Nick Paul. Three receivers set now. Etzler with the good snap this time. Fires it to the left side, and he'll have close to a first down there and probably will have it as he connects with Poling on the far side. No, excuse me, that was uh, Stinson. Yeah, a nice combination route right there. Uh, they have to uh, honor the deep man up the sideline, and they end up hitting the hitch there you know, for the easy first down. Stinson uh, is their number one receiver but he was kind of bottled up last week by the Pickwa defense. Yeah, he was kind of held in check with only six catches for 44 yards. Nick Poff had a big game last week uh, with 10 catches, 81 yards, and two touchdowns. Etzler out of the gun again. This time the two receivers line up wide to the near side. Rolls out, flags come down as that pass is incomplete. Pass in the backfield around the 40 yard line. Yeah, in the vicinity where it's going to be holding, and that is the preliminary call, Dan. Uh, while we're waiting, let's go ahead and give the starting defense for Wapakoneta playing uh, the 3-5 defense. Um, returning on the defensive line, Nathan Bracey, who was second-team WBL last year, returns. Uh, also, newcomers, senior Nate Valentine, number 43, and sophomore, number 51, Thomas Shinline. At linebacker, uh, Brandon Miller returns 
also um, a second team WBL player. Uh, Zach Smurgy, who scored the touchdown, played a lot last year, uh, but was not a starter. Um, number 22, Logan Farrenball, linebacker, number 35, and the outside linebackers, Colt Place, number three, and Zach Dietering, number nine. After the holding call, a first down and 20 coming up for the Bulldogs. And they line up at their own 30-yard line. And a lot of negative plays here to start for Elida. This, this needs to get turned around, but it is only 7 to nothing, so a lot of time to get this turned around. And now another penalty. And this looks like it's going to march Elida back a little farther. Well, you don't see it in football, but in basketball, after a start like this, this would be a time where a coach would call a timeout instead of settling down like, fellas, it's it's only seven to nothing. Things have not started very well for us at all. Mm -hmm. Let's start executing one play at a time, one person at a time, and let's get back to playing how we're supposed to play. First down and 25 now. 14 remaining here in this first quarter. That's the rollout. Lobs it down the near sideline and catches up with Stinson. He's going to shake the defender temporarily. Gets up to the 35-yard line across midfield and a big connection there for Stinson. Yeah, and Stinson actually was fairly well covered by Zach Dietering. Uh, they ran in the out and up, and he just had a half a step on him, and the ball was perfectly thrown. And Stinson did a tremendous job keeping his body between the ball and the defender and was able to make a big play for your light. And let's see if they can capitalize on him on this and keep their momentum going. So a big connection there to Brandon Stinson. And as you mentioned, he was well covered. That's Larry out of the backfield, rolls out, lobs it left side, and he overthrows his intended and target Nick Paw on the far side. Well, something to keep track of. Uh, Stinson apparently is well scouted. Pickwood double teamed him last week, and this is the second play in a row where Zach Dietering is just right into him right from the beginning. Looks like they want to be very physical with him off the football and, and try to limit his free release. And something I, uh, I should mention as well, I, I did need to talk about the defensive backs. A lot of experience coming back to the defensive backs for Walpock. Number two, Jensen Miracle. 23, Johnny Crawford, who had the big catch. And number four, Alex Grevy. Second, 10, two, receivers two receivers left, one to the near side right. Just under eight minutes to play here first quarter. And Elida putting together a drive here is Sumter bottled up in the backfield. No gain on the play, maybe a loss of a yard. Yeah, and Thomas Schindlein did a great job just holding his gap. Um, that's usually kind of the read option. Sometimes teams read it, sometimes it's a call. But in that case, he had his eyes on the running back, and he did not bite on the quarterback at all and was there for the play. So now a third down and 10. You know, and unlike college and pros, you know, when it's on the 35-yard line and third and 10, there's not a whole lot of panic because unless it's a negative play, they're probably going to go for a mm -hmm. fourth down. There are limitations to the high school kicking game. Over the middle. And there's, there's the laundry. As there is some uh, early contact with Nick Poff. Looks like Colton Place got a little bit eager on that one. Yeah, and that was probably the right call. He was there just a little bit early, you know, trying to defend that seam route. Um, you know, that, that's an aggressive play. It's, it's disappointing. But, you know, he was trying to make, you know, a clean play. Just got there a little bit early. Coaches will be disappointed. They'll try to correct that in film. But, you know, they're probably not going to get all that upset about that. So that'll bring up a first down and 10 as they move the ball up to the 25-yard line. Actually, to the 20, excuse me. Yep. I remember in high school, it, it's not a spot of the foul play. Uh, you know, it's a maximum 15-yard penalty. So in that instance, uh, he saved him five yards by pulling him down a little early. That's definitely a way of looking at it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Two receivers to the left, one to the near side right. And again, it's Etzler working out of the shotgun again. Sumter back there on the left side. Back to pass. He's looking to Stinson the whole way, and Stinson looking for the flag, and there it is. Well, the other one I think was there. That, that one... Yeah, I'm not that sure about. Uh, they're running a little corner pattern. Uh, they're calling holding as opposed to pass interference, which if he is kind of holding the jersey, you know, it doesn't matter if it's catchable or not. Hold it, defensive holding is defensive holding, whether mm -hmm. it's catchable or not. Yeah, that is the call against the Redskins. 
But as we were talking about, for the start that Elada came off of with their first possession, giving up a very quick touchdown by Walpock, and then and again immediately a negative play, for mm -hmm. them to come back and be in scoring position, if they're able to put the ball here in the end zone, you know, they can pretty much put that bad start to rest. Right. Not to mention the back-to-back -back, uh, penalties that set them back at the start of this drive. Closing in on seven minutes to play. This drive about two minutes old. Etzler out of the shotgun, ball in the 10-yard line. He'll roll out to the left. Lobs it left side, caught, pulling, dives to the corner of the end zone. And no indication yet. Looks like they're going to call him down at the one inch. Yeah, he, he was right there. Um, couldn't quite get the ball in the end zone. You know, that's fellow tight ends. You know, you should kind of root and be able to get those guys in the end zone if you don't always get your number called. Uh, but polling, obviously, uh, you know, a big-time weapon for him. That's his fourth catch on the year for uh, the Bulldogs. He'll line up in the backfield as they have a full house back there with Etzler. Stinson, the lone wide out, out to the left side. Sumter in motion. And that ball got... Stuffed back at the two-yard line. Yeah, Zach Smurgy from his linebacker position shot in there and got a negative play. You know, th this is one usual criticism that you hear about a spread offense. Um, you know, usually a lot of times you want to be underneath the center when you're this close because it's just a quicker play. Mm -hmm. uh, now you have to wait for the ball to get back before you hand it off. Um, you know, but obviously that's still only one down, but that does bring up a third. These offenses just don't work as well when they don't have as much field in front of them. Etzler now has polling in motion. Here's another handoff. This one up the middle and into the end zone. The touchdown for Desmond White, sophomore. He went untouched after some good blocking up front. Yeah, you know, White looks like he's a little scat back there. I mm -hmm. uh, was able to kind of wait and patiently, you know, find that crease to be able to go into the end zone. Uh, and a big answer touchdown for the Bulldogs. So Etzler will be out to attempt the extra point and try and even things up. Low snap, but the kick is up, and it is good. So that will even things up. So with 5.46 left in this first quarter of play, of this WBL matchup even at seven apiece. You're watching High School Football on Game Face Ohio. Are you hungry for some great food? Then come get some at CJ's Pizza. With fantastic prices and amazing food, you can't go wrong no matter what you order. Every Friday night during the football season, stop in and get an 18-inch two-topping pizza and 20 wings for $25 between four and close. CJ's Pizza has two locations, the Grandview Plaza in Wapakoneta and on Main Street in Crytersville. CJ's Pizza. Come get some. 7-7 tie here at uh, Kraft Stadium. And the Bulldogs with a nice answer there, Paul, for uh, what was a very impressive Wapakoneta possession. Yeah, so, and this is, has the makings of a great game like we thought it would be. Here's the kick off the toe of Etzler. It'll be fielded inside the 10-yard line up across the 15 to the 20 and falling forward across the 25-yard line is Cody Morgan. Backup catcher, wide receiver, excuse me, backup uh, quarterback, wide receiver, and uh, he also returns the ball. And he had a big catch on that first possession, which was a short possession, but a successful one as it ended with seven points for the Redskins. It'll be interesting to see what kind of uh, approach they come out here. Will they come out with that spread again, or will they come out in their traditional wing T look? Mm -hmm. We have not uh, seen Smurgy very much. He scored the touchdown on that last possession, but that was his only carry on the drive. They're showing spread again as Gibson works out of the shotgun. Back to pass, fires it right side, and it's caught up across the 30, falling forward to the 35, and picking up the first down is Smur excuse me, is Crawford. Yeah, Crawford targeted once again, and on that time he was isolated on the far side uh, with cornerback Tamir Relford, and he was giving him a, a big cushion. So a lot of times, get the ball to the athletes, see if he can make a play, and in this case, it was an easy 10 yards. Second reception of the night for Crawford. His first was a 58-yard scamper down the far sideline. 
Here's the handoff in the backfield, and Elida was there for that one. They stop it inside the 35-yard line for a loss on the play of about three yards. Yeah, Anthony Sumter uh, ends up getting the, getting the tackle, but really, defensive tackle Chance Whites, uh, the second-team WBL player from last year, an honorable mention All-State, really blew up that play with his penetration. So that'll force a second down and 12 for the Redskins, and they'll come out with three receivers wide to the near side left. Gibson out of the shotgun, lobs it near side, and it is incomplete. He was trying to hook up with Alex Grevy, but the pass was a little bit underthrown. Yeah, in that case, they had all three trip guys. Each one was running about a six, seven yard little hitch pattern. Um, and you're just trying to find, you know, who, which defender is the softest. In this case, he was trying to look for Greedy, but they just didn't time it up. Third down and 12 now. And we've seen Gibson work out of the uh, shotgun exclusively tonight. He's back there again, fires it to the right, and he overthrows his intended receiver across the 40-yard line, trying to hook up with Brandon Chisler. And it's safe to say, you know, Elida, who returns seven starters off a pretty decent defense last year, you know, has finally been able to kind of regain themselves uh, and got a big stop and should get the ball back here in good field position. So that will be a punt situation. Zarek Brandon back to punt it away. He'll stand inside his own 20-yard line. And Stinson is back there. Low snap, but he gets the kick away. Line drive kick. Stinson will field it at the 28-yard line. Brings it to the near side of the field. And a helmetless. That's uh, Chrysler. <laughs> Chrysler lost his lid, but not his desire to make the tackle. I can guarantee his, his, uh, his mom, who's probably in the stands watching the game, was probably not happy that he decided to get involved in that tackle. <laughs> So Elida will start their next possession at their own 34-yard line now with 4.25 left here in this first quarter. And this has the makings uh, of a back-and-forth game. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, last year, last two years have been really, really big games. Two years ago, it was a Week 10 game where it was basically an elimination game. Uh, who would make the playoffs? Elida won that game 28-21 uh, to 21 here two years ago mm -hmm. to send Elida to the playoffs and Walpock stayed home. Uh, last year... Walpock prevailed 29 to 18, and that 18 points was the low amount for a potent Elida offense from last year. They come out with three wide receivers to the far side left. And a fake handoff as Etzler tries to get to the outside corner. He'll find it. Shakes off a couple of tackles, breaks his way up close to the first down marker at the 45 yard line. Strong run by Etzler. Yeah, you know, a lot of people would have gave up on that play, and quite frankly, you know, an experienced linebacker, Brandon Miller, had a chance to make a play in the backfield, and then Cody Morgan had a chance to make the play right at the line of scrimmage. Uh, but, you know, great second effort uh, there by Etzler. They're going to go ahead and give him the first down at the 46. Etzler, 5'11", 155-pound sophomore, and he ran like a much bigger athlete on that play. And remember, protecting him on the offensive line are three of his classmates, three sophomores, and a freshman center. Etzler takes the snap and rolls out to the near side. He'll lob it. And he's caught by Pop at the 30-yard line. He's down the near sideline, tripped up, and he's straight into the end zone for the touchdown. Well-designed play. Out of a trips formation, the inside receiver ran a flag route with Poff. They tried to run that a little bit earlier when they had the defensive holding in the end zone on uh, on Wapak. This time they ran it to the wide side of the field, got a big play and a big touchdown. Poff had a big game last week against Piqua and comes out here with a 54-yard touchdown catch in the early stages of this game, giving a lot of their first lead of the night. And Nick Poff is not big on stature, being 5'5", 145, but he is coming up big for the Bulldogs here this season. That's his third touchdown on the air. Esler's extra point is up, and it is good. And so with 3.35 left here in this first quarter, Elida takes the lead 14-7 over the Redskins. You're watching... All too often, roof system problems with your home or business are discovered after leaking or other serious damage occurs. Introducing Roof Care, Frost Roofing's elite roof management program. 
designed to protect against preventable repair and high replacement costs by performing periodic checks to your roofing system. Early discovery and correction of these problems will maximize the life of your roofing system, giving you the most out of your roofing dollar. Call Frost Roofing today and ask about roof care. Back here at Kraft Stadium, Elida with a big, big play on their last possession, a 54-yard touchdown pass to Nick Poff. Takes a 14-7 lead with 3.35 left here in this first quarter. Etzler puts the foot into it. It'll be caught and dropped at the 5. And back up to the 16-yard line. Worst starting field position of the night so far for Wapak, starting at their own 16. Yeah, even though it's just a small little bobble, what that does is it throws off the blocking of your kickoff team. And if you remember the play before, or the kickoff return before, you know, he was running past that first wave barely because as they are going around the blockers, if you throw the timing off, you know, you're going to get hit right away like you did there. We're going to mark that one at the 17. So that's where the Redskins will come out. Let's see if they do anything different on offense here as they come out with more of their traditional style. And a handoff off the right side. Not much going there. Smurgy with the carry. Uh, actually, I think nope. that was uh, Brennan right there. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, Zarek Brandon uh, with his first carry of the year. Um, you know, that traditional wing tee set, you know, obviously they have a big shoes to fill with Connor Pickens, who is an all-everything player for them, you know, the last couple of years there at running back. And I think Coach Fry is going to do it by committee. It looked like some early movement on the left side of the offensive line there for the Redskins. So that's going to push them back. Turns a second down and eight into a second down and 13. Yeah, and that's one thing that'll drive Coach Fry nuts. You know, that's mm -hmm. a very controllable mistake. You know, when you jump off sides, you know, you're not remembering the play count. And they just talked to you about that in the huddle. In this case, it was a couple guys that jumped off sides. So, you know, that's very frustrating as a coach. You know, you're going to make some mistakes because some opponents might put pressure on you and make things tough on you. But that one is all on you. Second down and 12, and Gibson will step back into the shotgun now. Getting pressure from three Bulldogs. He is going to be sacked back inside the five-yard line near the three. Yeah, and there's a couple guys there, but Chance West Whites is the one that kind of led the way there. Uh, we mentioned him before, the 6'2", 250-pound junior, who's honorable mention all Ohio last year in second uh, team, Dahl WBL actually gained 35 pounds from last year. Right. Uh, so he's a pretty big dude to begin with. That's, and a, that, that's a kindergartner, isn't it? Like that's, that's, that, that, that's, that's pretty close. <laughs> that's pretty close. Small kindergartner, but. <laughs> so the ball spotted at the five-yard line, an eight-yard loss officially on that play, and not much going there as Alex Grevy took the handoff and stopped short of the line of scrimmage, so a punt situation for the Redskins. And they'll be standing in the back of the end zone, kicking this ball away. Yeah, Chance White's in there again. Uh, you have a lot of returnees on that Elida defense, as mentioned before. Seven returnees, uh, three guys that had all Ohio honors with White's um, polling, and then in the backfield, uh, safety, Anthony Sumter, number five. Zarek Brannon will kick it away from the shadow of his own goalpost. Puts the foot into it. It'll hit at the 32-yard line and roll out toward midfield where it's scooped up at the Wapak 49-yard line and then brought down back on his side of the 50 at the 48 is Brandon Stinson. So not much gained by picking that one up. No, and a lot of times fans get frustrated when the ball hits the ground and people say, hey, pick it up anyway, pick it up anyway. That's an example of why a lot of times you don't mm -hmm. because you have no other blocking. The timing has been thrown off. Um, and a lot of times negative plays can happen, although in this case at least the negative was just a little bit of a loss, which might have happened if it kept going anyway. Uh, obviously the worst case scenario you'd hate to get is a, is a fumble in that situation. Mm -hmm. Usually when I got anywhere close to the ball in a punt situation, the, t the coach told me to get, to get out of there. So Yeah, it seems usually have a, have a call for that. Um, you know, whether it's a poison call, some people call it a Peter call, whatever, but they usually have some sort of call to get away from the ball. 119 left first quarter. And the Bulldogs with the ball, starting on the own side of the field, but a good carry up the middle for Desmond White picks up about five yards. That second carry we've seen for him. Last time he kind of darted in, um, you know, from the from the end zone. And this time he showed a little bit of a power, you know, carrying and leaning forward for a couple extra yards. So 
So Atlanta will line it up here with a second down and six. Their defense did exactly what Coach Carpenter would want them to do after that scoring drive, and that was shut down Wapak's offense quickly. And a bad snap. And off the hands of Etzler, but it looks like the Bulldogs have recovered it. Yeah, second time we've had a bad snap. This time I'd put that one on the quarterback. Uh, it was a little high, but still, you need to be able to catch that. And a lot of times, it looks like it was going to be one of those read zone plays mm -hmm. where he's handing it off. Looks like he's trying to get his hands down a little bit quicker. Um, you know, Elida had been kind of avoiding uh, the negative play since the beginning of their second drive, and since then, it's really been all Bulldogs. Mm -hmm. Just 12 seconds left first quarter, and the Bulldogs line up on a third down and 10. Three receivers to the near side right. That's the will work out of the shotgun. Rolls out to the near side. He's going to carry it himself. He will pick up the first down and more across the 40 to the 35 and down the far sideline inside the 20. A flag comes down as he is knocked down and knocked out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. So we'll see what the flag's about. It drops near the 20-yard line on the far side of the field. Well, what a burst by Etzler. You know, this is the first time I've seen him live. You know, he has got an explosive, you know, first couple steps. We'll see what the flag is about. Looks like a sideline warning. Okay. And that will... So that'll be the final play of the first quarter. Let's see if the officials notice that. The time has expired. It'll be a first down marked at the seven-yard line. So the final play of the first quarter, and after one quarter of play, Elida up 14 to seven over Wapak. You're watching high school football at Game Face Ohio. When you see an orange truck, you think GA Windsor and Son Company. But the next time you see an orange GA Windsor & Son truck, we want you to think green. Why green? Because GA Windsor & Son are the original recyclers. Using a modern fleet of trucks, GA Windsor & Son Company collects food co-products from restaurants, food retailers, and food manufacturers in Ohio, Indiana, Michigan, and Kentucky. These food co-products are used to manufacture quality livestock and pet care feed ingredients. So the next time you see an orange GA Windsor & Son truck, think green. Back here. Back here at Kraft Stadium, and the Redskins on the short end, they trail 14 to seven. And uh, the Bulldogs knocking on the door again after a 44 yard run by Clark Etzler. Puts them down at the seven yard line as we get set to start the second quarter of play. Two receivers wide to the right, one to the near side left for Etzler, who has worked out of the shotgun most of the night. And a whistle and a flag. And I can tell you what I think they were going to set up for right there. They're motioning to isolate Stinson so he had one-on-one -on -one coverage on the far side of the field. Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they come back to that. They'll have to do it from five yards farther away as that penalty pushes them back to the 12-yard line. So first and goal, ball at the 12-yard line. Elida trying to add to a 14-7 lead. Etzler again will work out of the shotgun. Two receivers to his right. In the matchup, Joey Crawford is matchup with Stinson. Etzler rolls out to the right. Lobs it to the back of the end zone, and it is caught by a sliding Stinson about two yards deep. And a really good pattern there by Stinson. Uh, running a sharp corner pattern, and he put on a little move that lost Crawford and got himself wide open. So Stinson with his first uh, touchdown reception of the night as Etzler lines up to kicks the extra point. The extra point is up and it is good. And so with 11.53 left in the half, it's the Bulldogs 21 and the Redskins 7. You're watching high school football on TSC. When you think of protecting your assets, there's more than just your home and car. There's also your life and your family's future. Ensure those you love most are taken care of with protection planning. Life changes and opportunities occur. 
Look to someone you can trust with a customized approach. Minster Bank's Private Wealth Management Group, investment and insurance products. Not FDIC insured, may lose value, no bank guarantee. Back here in Elida, the Redskins trailing 21 to seven to this Bulldog team. And Paul, we talked about it during the break. Uh, this Bulldog team looks completely different than the team that took the ball in their first possession. Oh, it was such a difference in personality of the game so far from you know the first possession for each team to how it is right now. And if you remember at the time, they had a couple negative plays on that second drive. And it's like, you know, this is a time where you would talk about just Fellas, it's 7 nothing. we know we're better than this. And it looks like Eli has really responded with that mindset. Redskins will return it up across the 20-yard line to the 22. Alex Groovy with the return. And the Redskins will start out at the 22-yard line. Their first possession of this second quarter. Redskins have struggled offensively for, since their first possession when they went down the field and into the end zone on three plays, but since then they've come up with nothing. Gibson will be under center this time. Hand off to the left side and not much there for Josh Wendell, who goes off the left side for a couple of yards. You know what the prescription for the Redskins would be if you ask Coach Fry right now would be a long scoring possession. Uh, Eli is feeling pretty good about themselves in the flow on offense. He wants to keep them on the sidelines. Mm -hmm. You know, he wants to grind this out a little bit. And it's going to be tough because this is a very hard-nosed defense for Elida. But I, I think that's what the message that he wants to send on this possession. Gain of two on that play. Gibson takes it to the left side. Gets a nice block out there. And he'll pick up a couple more up to around the 28-yard line. Yeah, and two heavyweights collided right there with Smurgy on Walpock leading, leading the block there on polling. Uh, a lot of beef and a lot of talent, quite frankly, meeting right there. Mm -hmm. So now the Redskins back to the 27-yard line. A third down and seven coming up. Gibson out of the shotgun now. One receiver to each side. He is back, fakes the pass, and he is swarmed under. Caught for a loss back inside the 25-yard line to about the original line of scrimmage, and it'll bring up a fourth down. And there's that name again, number five, Chance Whites. Uh, he had three tackles for loss last week, and he's added to that total again. Uh, a lot of times you don't see defensive tackles making big plays. A lot of times they're just the grunt work gap protectors, uh, but he is definitely a difference maker and, and can make some uh, disruptive plays. So Brandon out there to put it away. Low snap, but he gets it away. He's a line drive kicker, and this one will take a hop in a lot of territory. Brought down at the 48-yard line. And then flying in there kind of late. We had a red skin land on that pile kind of late, but no call. There was a flag back at the 41-yard line. We'll see what that one's about. Yeah, that definitely could have been called for a flag. Looks like they're going to let that play go. Uh, but I think really any time you make contact where you're grabbing uh, the helmet, that, that should really be an automatic flag, especially at the high school level. Mm -hmm. We'll see what the uh, officials do with the flag back at the 42-yard line. Irregardless, you know, Elida is probably not going to have as good a field position as they'd like. However, They've been okay moving the football right here, so when you have an explosive offense such as them, you know, that's not going to affect them quite as much as a ball control team. Mm -hmm. So that will march the Bulldogs back to their own 32-yard line. Bulldogs with a 21-7 lead, 9.57 to go here in the half. And really, I mean, there's so much to go in this game. However, you know, the Redskins probably, they're just not built to, if they give up another touchdown, to be to make up three touchdowns uh, deficit. Mm -hmm. Up the middle. And something will pick up about three yards, maybe two up to the 34-yard line. And Sumter, a defensive standout, another all-Ohio def defensive player for him. Uh, plays a little bit both ways. Uh, it's one of those guys that you kind of call their one-and-a-half-way player, mm -hmm. uh, where they're a starter on one side, and they'll help you out and play maybe a, a crucial role for you on the other side. 
Sumter is a senior, 5'10", 200 pounds. Good looking back. That's where we'll again work out of the shotgun. Two receivers to his left, one to the far side right. He rolls out to the near side, lobs it, and it'll go in and out of the hands of Stinson near the 40-yard line. And there's lots of different ways to try to defend. It looks like Walpock's trying to play a lot of man-to-man -man with a free safety. Um, and that, that can be very successful. What that allows you to do is really put some extra pressure um, on the quarterback. And ideally, they'd like to be able to get to Etzler here, especially on this third down. Third down and seven. And the Redskins would love to get a stop here to get this offense off the field. Yeah, and the Redskin faithful over there, which is represented in large numbers, including a wide out represented by the student body for the Redskins. That's Lurt out of the shotgun again, and now a whistle, and a timeout going to be taken by the Bulldogs. So Coach Carpenter wants to talk things over here on a third down and seven with the Elida on top, 21 to seven. You're watching high school football on TSC. So, you think just because you're from a small town, you can't have everything that the big towns have? wrong. At TSC, we offer over 300 digital cable channels to you right here in the heart of the Midwest. Surprised? Don't be. We're TSC. No contracts, no gimmicks, and everything is straightforward and down to earth. Order your digital cable package today and the HD is free. Now you're talking smart. Incomplete pass on the uh, previous play intended for polling on the near side of the field is going to force Elida into a punt situation. And that play was defended by Dietering, who was right there. Uh, the home crowd kind of wanted the home whistle on that one, but I thought it was a nicely defended play and, and a big third down stop for the Redskins. So the Redskins getting what they need there on that possession. Relford will come out to kick it away, and a flag comes down. And that's going to be a legal substitution. Uh, they already broke the huddle, and then they ran a guy uh, in from the sidelines. Coach Carpenter try and wants an explanation. And I don't think he's going to get one, at least not right away. Fans on uh, this side of the field not very happy. You know, one thing you would say about Elida, you know, they've either been bust or boom. You know, either they've, you know, scored touchdowns and look good doing it, or they've, they have racked up a lot of penalties um, and, you know, put the ball on the ground a couple times, although they haven't lost possession of the ball. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if they kind of clean up their mistakes, they obviously would have a pretty good game going. Well, really, the, the, the penalties that they have had have not really – killed their drives that the two back-to-back -back penalties that they had early in the second possession they followed that up with a 40-yard strike down the near side of the field and the drive went on from there so they haven't really stopped themselves on any possession the Redskins had this drive shut down before that penalty it just changes the field position a little bit this one kicks toward the end zone as it hits at the 45-yard line, and the Redskins will have their best starting field position of the night as they will start out around the 38-yard line. And again, there's 8.41 left in the second quarter. You know, it's not time to say this is a crucial possession for the Redskins. However, they would feel a lot better about themselves if they would be able to get that long, grinded-out um, possession and get the ball in the end zone, get back to where it's a one-touchdown game. You know, that's where their comfort level is going to be, especially when you get into the second half. Well, and this uh, Redskin team won the toss and deferred to, to start the second half. So if they're able to take some time off this clock and get it down to a one touchdown lead, then they would have that possession to start the second half. Not much there on the first down carry, a couple of yards up to the 40 yard line. No, and maybe this is a little bit of an inexperience showing on uh, the offensive line of Wapakoneta. They're just not getting that push against a very stout defense for the Bulldogs. They hustle up to the line here. Two backs in the backfield, Gibson under center. Handoff and not much there at all. Uh, Smurgy tried to go up the middle and he shut down for a loss of a yard. Dominic Painter coming in to make the play that time. It's a very talented uh, group of linebackers for the Elida defense who plays the, the base 4-4. 
He'll spot that ball just shy of the 40 yard line. So there you see on the replay, Smurgy had nowhere to go. So, and, and this is a uh, remnant of the Lonesome Polecat situation uh, that uh, Doug Fry is, is also known for historically. And here's the uh, misdirection as the snap goes directly to Josh Wendell, who goes off the left side and picks up a first down. Yeah, Josh Wendell uh, primarily playing on defense so far this year. Um, you know, getting you know a, a carry on offense. You know, he was kind of a vital cog for him last year as well. Uh, but Coach Fry going to a little bit of the trickery, and sometimes you need to do that just to mix things up. You can still go back to your base offense after this standpoint, but they needed that first down. First and ten, ball at the 50-yard line. Handoff, Schmergy going up the middle. Difficulties. We uh, missed a portion of this possession by the Redskins, but what we can tell you is that they have grinded this ball for now close to five minutes off the clock because they took they started this drive at their own 38-yard line with 8.41 to go in this half, now closing in on 3.41, and the Redskins have it now down to the 11-yard uh, line, and they've had second down to nine. And they've had a lot of key third-down conversions on this drive. Gibson rolls to the near side, all kinds of pressure. He's back out close to the 30 and lobs it off to the right side, incomplete. And I think he was lucky to escape with an incompletion on that play. Yeah, and that's actually, they ran it to the other side, but the similar play, kind of a bootleg, where they found Henderson for the big conversion on third and four a couple of plays before. Um, in this case, they're trying to catch him off guard again. A little bit of a trend breaker going for the play action pass on second down, uh, but an excellent decision by Gibson to be able to eliminate that from being a negative play. Mm -hmm. Third down and nine now. Gibson under center, has one receiver to his left. He is back to pass, lobs it left side. Oh. He's intercepted on the far side of the field. A lot of green in front of the defender. He's across midfield. He's going to take it all the way to the house. Jesse Whaley will take it all the way back from the 10 yard line. A flag down at the 40-yard line on the far side of the field, on the, on the Wapakoneta side of the field. And that one may keep it from being a touchdown. Yeah, it's either a block in the back or a hold, I believe was a preliminary call. So keep it out of the end zone. However, still, just a tremendous change in momentum and fortunes. Walpock right on the doorstep looking to make this a one-score game. And now Elida with a big turnover and Wheeler jumping um, the screen pass, as we see here on this replay, Gibson kind of floated up there a little bit too much. And, you know, when you have that kind of speed on defense, you know, they have some uh, time to be able to go there and make that play. You know, negates, you know, uh, nearly a 95-yard would have been. Mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of touchdown return, maybe a 90-yard touchdown return. Um, here, regardless, just a tremendously big play by the Elida Bulldog defense. And kind of a crushing blow here to the Redskins, who now – you know, still trail by two touchdowns with three minutes to go. And the Bulldogs, although they didn't score, have been very explosive on offense and have the ball here at midfield. Right. I guess the, from one side of it, the Redskins were at least able to move the ball offensively in the way that they normally like to and take five minutes off the clock, keeping Etzler on the sideline for that time. That's, that's the only part of it. You know, you want to keep them off the field, but you want to come away with points. So Wheeler with the big interception gives his offense back the ball. Etzler will roll out to the near side, keeps it himself. He's down inside the 40 to the 35, and he's hit by two Redskins. Loses the ball, and the Redskins will recover it at the 24-yard line. First down, Redskins. And a big turnover there after a, a, a big run there on the speed option by Etzler. And hopefully we can get another look at that because the Elida fans are screaming that Esler was down. Now here's a replay, but this is the interception. We will see what the call is. For what it's worth, number 35, Logan Faribault is the one that ended up coming up with the football afterwards. Here we go. Here's, here's the replay right here. So Esler coming right into your living room here. And I think he lost the ball before he was coming down. Yeah, great job by Alex Grevy with a strip. You can see him just ripping the ball, and they're coached on that. Yeah, it appears that the ball was coming out, you know, as he was coming down. Tremendous defensive play, and again, a great turn of momentum on what could have been a disaster for the Redskins. 
With the turnover, Elida will take a timeout with their lead 21 to 7 and 2.57 remaining here in the half. We'll take a break as well. You're watching high school football on TSC. Are you hungry for some great food? Then come get some at CJ's Pizza. With fantastic prices and amazing food, you can't go wrong no matter what you order. Every Friday night during the football season, stop in and get an 18-inch two-topping pizza and 20 wings for $25 between four and close. CJ's Pizza has two locations, the Grandview Plaza in Wapakoneta and on Main Street in Crytersville. CJ's Pizza. Come get some. Back here in Elida and a huge turn of events, a couple of back-to-back -back turnovers. And the Redskins will come away with the ball, following the fumble by Etzler. Gibson will bring the offense to a lot of scrimmage at the round 25, and that pass incomplete, intended for Grevy over the middle. Yeah, and a little bit of miscommunication out of the trips. You had two guys running slants with Grevy and Crawford, and then you had Morgan on the bubble screen. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell, you know, he kind of in between through which person that he was trying to hit on the slant. Second down and 10. The but Redskins it, coming off of the uh, drive where they moved the ball the most efficiently aside from the opening drive, but the turnover at the end kind of negates all that. Gibson out of the shotgun again, sets up the screen. It'll be caught up across the 30 to the 35. Still on the screen at the 40 and brought down at the 41 yard line. Good carry there. Yeah, by uh, Chrysler. Chrysler. Yeah, the tight end middle screen. Um, you know, you don't see that a whole lot anymore. Uh, but great job giving the big guy some uh, ball and some space. Uh, Wheeler had a chance to get the same guy that made the big interception to be able to make the play there. Uh, but he was just came up a little bit short. Big conversion there for the Redskins. Again, pressure from Elida. Gibson rolls out left side. Going to keep it himself. He'll scoot out of bounds at about the 50-yard line. Flag comes down on the Elida side of the field. And again, Gibson didn't have a, a whole lot of chance back there to really see anything develop. Good pressure on the play by Chase Weitz. And it looks like the, the penalty is going to go against the Bulldogs. Coach Carpenter clearly unhappy with the officiating here in the first half. As this will move Wapak 10 yards closer to their end zone up to the 40-yard line. Two and a half minutes to play here in the half. Redskins could use a touchdown here going into the break. Oh, definitely so. You know, for their confidence standpoint, you know, it could be a totally different game if they were able to punch this ball in. Gibson out of the shotgun. Fires it left side. It's caught. Close to the first down marker up to the 30-yard line. And I believe it was Henderson on the receiving end. Uh, no, Crawford. Excuse me. Johnny Crawford, who has yeah. had some clutch catches tonight. Yeah, Johnny Crawford, that was another one of those times where they were everybody was running kind of about a seven-yard hitch. Uh, and in this case, he had the guy, his defender was given the most cushion, and uh, Morgan hit the right guy. Gibson, excuse me, hit the right guy. Gibson out of the shotgun. Two minutes left in the half. He fakes the pass, now takes it himself. Up across the 25, picks up the first down down to the 24, well, we'll mark it right at the 25-yard line. Yeah, and, and nothing drives defenses and, and defensive coaches more crazy than an athletic quarterback can run a little bit. You know, you did a good job defending um, the patterns, but now their legs can kind of break you down. Under two minutes to play. Gibson again out of the shotgun. He'll roll to the left, keeps it himself. He's going to have a first down and more inside the 10. Down the left sideline, he'll go out of bounds inside the five-yard line. And Gibson really making a difference here, you know, getting a chance to be able to make the play out of shotguns, passing the ball and running the ball right here. Um, again, this brings up, you know, a red zone possession right here. We'll see if the Redskins can finish this off as we see a timeout being taken on the field. Looks like the Bulldogs will take a timeout here as we take another look. It's Gibson going off the left side. And he turns on the speed. Sumter there to knock him out of bounds. Timeout taken here with 137 left in the half. We'll keep it right here as the uh, Bulldogs take a break to get their defense straight. And it looks like they might have some cramping down there on the field. It's that kind of night. 
Oh, definitely. No, it was in the 90s earlier today. Went on my way over here. It was still in the mid to upper 80s. Uh, obviously, you know, it's still kind of early in the season. Their conditioning isn't where it should be quite yet. And, you know, combine that with the heat, um, you're going to have some cramps, and it's not even the second half yet. I, I would expect a little bit more. way up here to the press box. <laughs> I, I had to take a break about midway up. Fortunately, I brought some water, so was able to make it the rest of the way. Well, we'll, we'll make sure we keep you hydrated. Runs. He probably could have carried me the rest of the way if necessary. <laughs> <laughs> 21 to 7. The Elida with the lead in has stayed this way for quite some time. The uh, Bulldogs scored their last touchdown in the first quarter with 119 left. So the Redskins have played them to zeros here in this second quarter. And they're trying for the second time, threatening inside the red zone, to try and get some points out of this. Their last uh, venture down in, into this deep into Elida territory ended with an interception by Jesse Wheeler. Now, he returned all the way back to the end zone on the opposite end, but it was called back because of a penalty. Interesting formation right here on the eight-yard line by the Redskins. Gibson will get a nice block on the outside. He'll get hit as he gets down close to the five-yard line, about a three-yard gain in the play. Yeah, and uh, the returnee on the line, Mason City there, was pulling from his right guard to try to lead the way. And a yeah, pretty good gain there. You know, that's, I'm sure, what Coach Fry wanted to be able to accomplish. You know, spread the defense out and put the ball in the hands of, you know, the hot hand, which happens to be Kyle Gibson. And if you're going to be running out there, it's nice to have a six-foot, 240-pound escort in front of you. And it looks like Wapakoneta will take a timeout here with 1.10 left. Second down and goal from the four-yard line when we come back. You're watching High School Football on TSC. All too often, roof system problems with your home or business are discovered after leaking or other serious damage occurs. Introducing Roof Care, Frost Roofing's elite roof management program designed to protect against preventable repair and high replacement costs by performing periodic checks to your roofing system. Early discovery and correction of these problems will maximize the life of your roofing system, giving you the most out of your roofing dollar. Call Frost Roofing today and ask about Roof Care. Welcome back in at Kraft Stadium. The Redskins knocking on the door, trailing 21 to seven. They have it second down and goal on the four yard line of the Bulldogs with 110 left here in this first half and they'd really like to get it punched in here. And, and, I, and I would be surprised to see them stay in that spread um, situation, but here it is again. They must have heard you. Gibson out of the shotgun. He'll go to the left, shakes one would-be tackle, and he'll gain a couple of yards down to about the two-yard line. So a third down and goal from the two coming up. Yeah, very athletic move there by Gibson. Uh, Eli had two guys there. Smurgy wasn't able to block really either one of them, but he was able to kind of just stay tight enough to him that the, uh, the backers there for Eli wasn't able to make the play. They're actually going to spot that at the three-yard line. 45 seconds left in the half. Gibson under center, has two backs behind him, one receiver wide to the left. And motion on the left side, and that's gonna be a big play there. As Hemminger looked like he moved early. That's gonna cost precious yards. Yeah, Joel, Hegema Joel Hegemeyer, that's, that, that is a really, really tough penalty right there. So the Redskins will take another timeout to kind of regroup now that they've been moved back to the eight yard line. So a third down at eight coming up here with 32 seconds left. What's the call here, Mr. Sadler? Well, it totally changed. That five yards makes a huge deal. Um, you know, the time doesn't really matter at all. You know, you got another timeout, you could stop the clock if you really wanted to. When you're still in the third yard, three yard line, it's probably gonna be a run all the way. And if you don't get it, run the ball again and try to push the ball in. Um, you know, does Coach Fry have enough confidence in his line to be able to get eight yards in, in two plays here by just running the ball uh, through the conventional methods. I, I'm not sure they do. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see them come back out into that spread situation and then give Gibson a little bit of a run throw option uh, to see if he can kind of get the ball in there in two shots that way. Mm -hmm. And if we look back uh, through the first half, I don't remember a lot of runs on the Wapak side that were longer than eight yards. Although Gibson did have a, a good carry on the left side. 
Yeah, when Gibson's been able to, you know, imp improvise a little bit, uh, you know, they've been able to come up with some big plays, but their traditional out of the wing tee, you know, they've been pretty limited with the yards that they've gotten out of that. But still, that's what they want to establish. That's who they are. And if they're able to score here, you know, I'm sure that's what they will talk about at halftime. Well, they've got two plays and 32 seconds to work with. Third down and goal from the eight yard line. Redskins trailing 21 to seven. Gibson back to pass. Has some pressure, he's gonna be hit and dropped for a loss. Back outside the 10, close to the 15 yard line. Yeah, two guys there, Anthony Sumter was in. Um, and Dominic Painter, both of those in there, and two really back-breaking plays there for the Redskins. A five-yard penalty, and then a sack, you know, take them from, you know, th the three-yard line all the way back to the 12. And with 24 seconds left, as we take a look at this sack here, the Redskins will take another timeout to stop the clock with 24 seconds. Let's see what they decide to do here. Is well, it, the place kicker is Bailey Heingardner. Um, you know, if you have confidence in him, even though you still be down two scores, you know, a lot of times the play would be to go for a field goal here. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, tr if you have confidence in your offense, obviously to get within one score and a touchdown um, is definitely, you know, more desirable. We'll see what Coach Fry dials up. It looks like he has the offense out there on the field. Fourth down from the 13-yard line. Their, their success has not been on uh, plays where Gibson has to stand back there and survey the defense. They, uh, their success passing-wise in this first half has been quick hits. Oh, definitely. And when he's got a chance to move, if you remember, you know, the first big play to Crawford, you know, he kind of rolled out just a little bit and gave Crawford a little bit of time to, to clear on that crossing pattern. We'll see what they call for here. Gibson out of the shotgun. Two receivers to his right. He is back to pass. He fires it to the right side. He had a receiver, but he overthrew him. Incomplete pass looking for Tony Morgan on the right side of the field. And for the second time in two possessions, the Redskins have gotten down into a lot of red zone territory and came away with zero. Now, when you give yourself you know, the opportunity to score, you, you really need to be able to put the ball in the end zone and get points up on the board. You know, that's got to be really, you know, something that they need to address at halftime. Um, you know, it easily could be a 21-21 game or at least a 21-14 game. 19 seconds left, and the Bulldogs will take a knee here to end this first half. And the Bulldogs, after an inauspicious start, came back and put together a great first quarter to go into the locker room with a 21-7 lead here at halftime. You're watching high school football at Game Face Ohio. When you see an orange truck, you think GA Windsor & Son Company. But the next time you see an orange GA Windsor & Son truck, we want you to think green. Why green? Because GA Windsor & Son are the original recyclers. Using a modern fleet of trucks, GA Windsor & Son Company collects food co-products from restaurants, food retailers, and food manufacturers in Ohio, Indiana, Michigan, and Kentucky. These food co-products are used to manufacture quality livestock and pet care feed ingredients. So the next time you see an orange GA Windsor & Son truck, think green. Halftime here at Kraft Stadium, the Atlanta Bulldog marching band performing as their team leads 21 to seven here at the break. In the first half, the scoring summary looks like this. The Wapakoneta Redskins got on the board first on their first offensive possession. Three plays, including a 58 yard touchdown pass to Crawford, capped by a one yard touchdown run by Smurgy. And that was a the first score of the ball game. The Redskins led at the 856 mark in the first quarter. The Elida Bulldogs, after a, a rough start, came back on their next possession and tied things up 7-7 on a one-yard touchdown run by Desmond White at the 546 mark. Elida then added to that, added to their tally with a 54-yard touchdown pass to Nick Poff at the 335 mark. They took a 14-7 lead. They took the ball down deep into Wapakoneta territory as the first quarter came to an end and then punched it in from 12 yards out on a Etzler to Stinson touchdown pass with 11.53 remaining in the half. And that's where scoring ended. From that point on, it was uh, back and forth. The Redskins moved the ball, I think, more efficiently in the second quarter, Paul, than they did in the first, but came away with a couple of empty trips into the red zone. Yeah, Dan, and that's the most important part. You know, when you move the football, 
you're controlling the clock. However, you need to end the possession with some points. And really what Coach Fry needs to be talking about to them at halftime is, fellas, we're not doing a very good job of, you know, maintaining the block. We're losing the battle up front. You know, we need to be able to move the ball effectively, you know, play the clock, but also finish, you know, without um, being able to put the ball in the end zone. Uh, so they really need to make sure that they improve their blocking up front so they can get that running game going. You know, you take away the long Crawford pass, which set up the first touchdown, you know, they've really not been able to crack that defense a whole lot. And might have hurt themselves a couple of times with penalties in the first half, but they were able to put together some imp impressive drives as well. They were shut down in that second quarter, though, held by the Wapakoneta defense. What do they need to do differently in the second half? Uh, just as you kind of mentioned, they just need to eliminate their mistakes. Uh, you know, they obviously had a lot of mistakes that first drive, you know, uh, a bad snap. They've had a, a ton of penalties this game. Uh, sometimes they haven't been able to get out of their own way. You know, they had a touchdown taken away because of a penalty. They immediately fumbled the ball after that. You know, they feel that, you know, after a really bad start, we could be up a, even just a little bit more. You know, they're probably very happy with their defensive play. Uh, it's a very aggressive defensive front where they're blitzing a lot of linebackers. Uh, Sumter's coming up from a safety position a lot of times and making plays in the backfield. They're being very, very aggressive, and sometimes you're going to get some mistakes. However, if they just clean up those mistakes, you know, they go a long way for them to win this football game. Well, the Redskins are down by two touchdowns, but you have to be disappointed that this isn't a tie ball game right now. We're at the, back, at the break here in Elida. We'll be back to start the second half, and as we uh, take a look at first half, stati or excuse me, first half highlights, um, as we go to our break. When you think of protecting your assets, there's more than just your home and car. There's also your life and your family's future. Ensure those you love most are taken care of with protection planning. Life changes and opportunities occur. Look to someone you can trust with a customized approach. Minster Bank's Private Wealth Management Group Investment and Insurance Products. Not FDIC insured. May lose value. No bank guarantee. Back here at Kraft Stadium, second half just about ready to get underway. Elida with a 21-7 lead here in this WBL contest. Both of these teams came in 1-0, and uh, both of them moved the ball fairly well in the first half. There was miscues uh, by Elida that uh, led to some penalties, and there were some miscues by the uh, Redskins that led to the breakdowns inside the red zone, and that's... That's what brought us to this 21 to seven score. Hey, you know, Elida has made some mistakes, but they've been able to overcome those mistakes. Uh, Walpock's mistakes have come basically to where they can't make up for them anymore and they turn the ball over. Mm -hmm. The Redskins will get the ball to start this second half. And they should have pretty good field position. It's fielded the 18 yard line. To the far side of the field, across the 30, to the 35, to the 40, still on his feet at the midfield. He brings it back to the near side, and it's off to the races. Inside the 30, to the 25, nice move in the 20-yard line, and all the way to the house. A 80-yard touchdown return for Johnny Crawford. And what a start to the second half for uh, the Redskins. Uh, Johnny Crawford, another one of those returnees, uh, senior, with a big play in the first half that set up the first touchdown and now gets them on the board a second time for the Redskins with a big kickoff return for a touchdown. 
So Johnny Crawford gets the Redskins right back on the board with 11.40 remaining here in this third quarter. Crawford showing off of some of that athleticism, just tremendous athlete, tremendous baseball pitcher uh, for the state runner-up Redskins this past spring. The extra point attempt. Hold is down, the kick is up, and Heimgardner's kick is up and good. And so just like that, the Redskins cut that lead in half. Elida with a 21-14 lead with 11.40 to go here in the third quarter. You're watching high school football. TSC. So, you think just because you're from a small town, you can't have everything that the big towns have? Wrong. At TSC, we offer over 300 digital cable channels to you right here in the heart of the Midwest. Surprised? Don't be. We're TSC. No contracts, no gimmicks, and everything is straightforward and down to earth. Order your digital cable package today, and the HD is free. Now you're talking smart. An 80-yard touchdown, or excuse me, kickoff return for a touchdown. Cut the Elida lead in half as Johnny Crawford went 80 yards on the opening kickoff of this second half to make it a 21-14 Elida lead. And the Bulldogs will, excuse me, the uh, Redskins will kick it away. Ewing kicks it away, short kick. Stinson trying to make a uh, similar type return, gets shut down on the far side and he's run out of bounds in front of the student section on the Walpock side of the field at the 30 yard line. Yeah, Zach Dietering with a nice play right there. And so far the second half has started. We're gonna see the replay, we're gonna see the replay here by Johnny Crawford. Uh, the message has been sent by the Redskins special teams that we're ready to play here in the second half. And now if they just play in the moment, it's a one possession game. If the defense can come out here and shut down the, the offense uh, of the Bulldogs, you know, a totally different attitude to the second half can prevail. Well, we'd said it was an 80-yard kickoff return, but Crawford ran to the far side of the field, back to the near side, and up the middle. So it was more like 140 yards by yeah, the time he got to the end Yeah, but he's a young man. He can do it. <laughs> Etzler will fire it deep down the left side, and he overthrows his intended receiver, Poff, on the near side of the field. And that time, you know, the, the touchdown man, Crawford, was playing deep third, was in position there to make the play on Poff. It looked like he was going to bite up a little bit on the curl, but he was there in plenty of time to be able to cover Poff, which is uh, slightly overthrown. So a second down and 10 coming up for the Bulldogs. And if you're Coach Fry, you would love to see a big defensive stop right here. Get the, the hands back in the, or get the ball back in the hands of your offense, trying to even things up. Yeah, most definitely here, Dan. Let's, let's see if they can uh, get a good second down stop here. That's out of the gun. And that one mishandled. He'll pick it up, go to the right side. But by now, five Redskins in his back pocket, and he has stopped for a loss back at the 27-yard line. And this really has, you know, kind of how the game started. Mm -hmm. You know, where Walpock hit the big play and got on top, and the Elida started scuffling a little bit. That's the third time they've had problems on the snap, as we can see right here. Uh, Etzler just unable to hold on to it, and then not able to make anything happen afterwards. Brings up a third and long. There you see Coach Carpenter signaling into play. Third down and 12 now for the Bulldogs. And Elida dangerous, just a man free look here defensively from Wapak. Poff in Isolated motion Stinson. to the far side of the field. Etzler looking squarely on this side of the field and his pass intended for Stinson off his outstretched hands. And incomplete, so a three and out for Elida. And you'll see the, Elida will like to do that against teams that are going to man-to-man -man them. They will motion away from Stinson just to try to get him one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, that time, there was pretty good coverage there. He still almost came up with this, the tremendous one-hand catch. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that Elida did try to do to adjust there is there were free safety. Did cheat over and provide some help. So if he wasn't going to the sideline and he tried to stay in the middle of the field, he definitely would have help there. So Elida forced to punt it away from their own 28-yard line. Wheeler puts the foot into it. High kick, and it'll be hit at the 40-yard line and marked down at the 39-yard line on the Wapak side of the field. So the Redskins helped out by the 80-yard kickoff return. 
by Crawford to start this half and a good defensive stop on that possession uh, uh, for the Redskin defense gets their offense back out on the field with a chance to even things up with 10-24 left third quarter. Yeah, you couldn't have scripted a better start here for the Redskins. So you return the kickoff for a touchdown, you get a three and out from your defense. Now it's time to see what the offensive line can do. They come in with Gibson under center. He'll hand it off to Henderson off the left side. He's got room to run up near midfield and he powers his way across the midfield stripe into a lot of territory to the 48 yard line. And Coach Fry, I would be surprised if he got out of the wing T formation for this drive. I think he challenged his offensive line at halftime. Is, and can you drive the ball against this tough defense? Can you lead us to a win? Let's see what you guys can do. Remember, there's a lot of new faces on that offensive line for the Redskins. Sumter moving a little bit slow out there following that play. We'll see if, if he's okay. Here's a handoff. Smurgy right side inside the 45 to the 44 yard line. And again, Smurgy was able to get about four yards on that play. Remember earlier on in the first half, they were only getting about two yards on the dive. So, so that is improvement. While that's not, you know, the, the most interesting play in the world, a lot of times from a fan standpoint, you know, the coaches will look and solve that. It's second and six. We can gain four more yards, get a third and two. We'll be very happy with this offense. Mm -hmm. Same formation here. Gibson under center. Henderson off the left side. And he'll pick up a couple down close to the 42-yard line. So not the three or four yards that you're hoping for, but at least a positive gain. No, but definitely this is a time where you want to be challenged. You know, it's third and four, uh, maybe third and long four or short five here. Uh, I, I would still be surprised if you saw anything but, you know, a, a power run play here by the Redskins. Gibson up to the line, has a man in the wing on the right. Two backs, fakes the handoff, and keeps it himself. He's hit behind the line of scrimmage and brought down for maybe a loss of a yard. It'll be a fourth down now. Yeah, Quentin Poling, uh, the standout linebacker for the Bulldogs, we haven't called his name as much as we kind of thought we would on the defensive end, makes a, a, a really, uh, on the defensive side, excuse me, makes his first really big play on the defensive side. When we have said his name, he's made the serious hit for the most part, and this time a good tackle. Here's Brandon. Kick it away from his own 43. Now it's a fake. And Smurgy off the right side will be stopped short of the first down at the 40-yard line. Now, when Kevin Russell and Clinton Poland were not fooled um, on that fake punt, uh, Coach Fry is notorious, especially when they're in field position, you know, around midfield about, you know, running some of the trickery. Uh, hey, great job replay? maintaining their gaps right there and playing a punt safe defense. You know, it causes the turnover. So Elida will start this possession at 8.36 left in the third quarter. And they'll have good field position at their own 40-yard line. Etzler has three receivers, two to the left, one to the far side right. He rolls out to the near side. There's the pitch, high pitch. And White lucky to hold on to that ball because the way that that ball hit his hands, it looked like it was going to go over his head. Yeah, speed option right there. Brandon Miller there with the big play. The only other time we saw that went for big yardage, but there also was a fumble on that play, if you recall. Uh, that was a, a turnover there late in the second quarter for the Bulldogs. Yeah, uh, Etzler has just checked out of the ball game. Kind of limped off there a little bit. And we'll see. Uh, that puts Logan Alexander out there. And Logan Alexander got some playing time last week. Actually threw for a touchdown in the fourth quarter uh, to Poff against Piqua. He's a 5'11", 165-pound freshman. He lines up out of the gun with three receivers. He's back to pass and fires it right over the middle. Stinson with the catch up to the 45-yard line. He bat battles his way, but he's going to get shut down there. So <laughs> Coach off Fry the bench. with confidence, and he's right, at the, right out there throwing the ball. Yeah, right off the bench, a freshman being thrown into the Western Buckeye League, taking the ball, taking the snap, by the way, from another freshman. You know, last year at this time, they are playing eighth grade football, Dan. <laughs> right. Alexander's still out there. Looks to the sideline for the play. Third down and four coming up 
for the Bulldogs. They lead 21-14. Back to pass, and he's gonna keep it himself. Escapes to the right side, he's hit, and he stopped short of the first down marker at the 49-yard line. It's gonna be an interesting decision here for Carpenter. It looks like they're gonna be just about a yard short. See Jesse Wheeler coming out there, so it looks like they will put it away. But obviously, Coach Carpenter has full confidence in Logan Alexander to run this offense. <laughs> Definitely, you know, for a freshman being thrown out there into a Western Buckeye League game uh, on the fly like that, tremendous first pass, a nice scramble. Uh, you know, the, the future looks bright at the quarterback position for the Bulldogs. Did not see Alexander down there on the side, or excuse me, uh, Etzler on the sideline. Fair catch called for and recovered at the 19-yard line for the Redskins. So they'll have a little bit farther to go. They will take over first down and 10 at their own 19-yard line with 6.18 to play third quarter. Redskins exited rather quickly on their last possession. And we see Etzler on the sideline. It didn't look from the replay that we saw on the uh, the option play that they ran that he was hit by anybody before he started to limp. So we'll see how that turns out. Left side. And Brandon will take it out of bounds on the far side of the field. In terms of success running the ball, Walpock's success has hit from the tackle on out against this defense. Mm -hmm. They have not had a whole lot of success running between the tackles, which I know is probably frustrating to Coach Fry, uh, but when you're as good of a coach as he is, you know, you have to find whatever's working for that game and ride that out. Is that a product fall probably of the inexperience of the offensive line or just lack of size? Ida, you know, between the tackles, they're sending a lot of their experience between the, the tackles. So a short gain on second down brings up a third down and three for the Redskins. And that's one of those downs that they like. Third down and three, very workable number. Gibson will be under center, has one receiver out to his left. Fakes the handoff. He's got pressure from the left side, but he gets to the corner and he'll go out of bounds close to the first down marker. And it looks like he should have the first down. Yeah, pretty athletic play. Uh, defensive end for Elida was right there. He had to jump up underneath him to be able to pick up that first down. Uh, Elida not really fooled that much, um, but even though that was a bootleg, that, that was a run all the way uh, for the Redskins and Gibson. Good athletic move by Gibson coming out of the backfield to uh, elude that tackler. Again, feeling they can hurt Elida on the run out on the corners. Movement up front by the Redskin offensive line, and that's going to push them backwards. So the, uh, the false start there by the Redskins pushes them backwards. First down at 15 now. And puts the ball at the 25-yard line on the Redskin side of the field. Gibson under center, he is back to pass. Rolls out to the near side, still looking to throw, lobs it, and it's caught up across the 40 to the 42 yard line. Nice catch there by Crawford. Yeah, and that's when Gibson's had his most success. It's not, you know, off of three steps and then immediately throwing the ball. It's after a little improvisation. You know, he scrambled a little bit. The defender has to come up to honor the run by Gibson because he's been pretty successful with that. And then uh, Crawford, like receivers are usually trained, is to go deep a little bit and try to look for that big play. Mm -hmm. Crawford has made some critical catches so far tonight for the Redskins. He lines up wide near side to the right. Handoff up the middle. Smurgy will push forward for three yards up to the 45-yard line. Now, even though they're not getting a lot of production between the tackles, you, you can't abandon it. You mm -hmm. know, you've got to keep them honest. You've got to keep those guys in there because if you do hit it on that, it can hit quick for a big play. And the backs that, that uh, Walpock puts out there do have the ability to break away and and run away from the group. Smurgy and Henderson in the backfield. And Gibson fakes the handoff. He lobs the pass out left side, caught. 
And close to the first down near midfield. A nice catch there by Chrysler. Little play action, getting the ball there, tight end there on the out pattern. Sets up a third and short. Right at midfield. Redskins now started this drive at their own 19 yard line. Third down and two coming up from midfield. Gibson under center. Hand off right up the middle and a first down there for Smurgy. Yeah, and that's why they like to have those third and twos because a third, three yard run like that gets you the first down. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the keys to the game that Coach Carpenter gave us was to minimize their gains on first down because he knows what the Redskins want to do. You know, Coach Fry wants them to be able to set up third and short. That's what this offense, when they're in the wing tee, is predicated on. Okay, grind it down, grind it down. Let's get positive plays on first and second to set up that third and short. First down and 10 now for the Redskins. Three and a half minutes remaining here in the third quarter. Gibson handoff Henderson. He is hit in the backfield and dropped as he gets back to the line of scrimmage. And good job by the defensive line of Elida to blow a hole in that play on the left side. Yeah, Chance Weiss is making a living in the backfield. Uh, he he is so big, he's nearly unblockable. You know, he's been in the backfield on almost every play, you know, causing disruptions to the play. He had two Redskins over there with him, trying to keep him out of there, and then knocked Henderson down as he came around the corner. Gibson back to pass. Left side, he overthrows his intended receiver on the far side, looking to connect with Crawford near the 20-yard line. And that, and that play was kind of set up. Um, the Redskins have been running some of those hitch patterns. Well, that time that's actually was a hitch and go, where Gibson pump faked, and then Crawford did his hitch and then went deep. Unfortunately, he didn't get quite as open as he thought he might be, and Gibson got a little bit of pressure, wasn't able to really step into the throw. Third down and 11 now for the Redskins. And some substitutions, Henderson and Brandon will check out Crawford. And Morgan out wide to the left, and Gibson works out of the shotgun. And now they spread this offense out a little bit. They ran this play once in the first half, or at least out of that formation. And a little bit of a wide receiver screen on the far side. Morgan will pick up a few. Well, so much of the first possession, they were able to move the ball a little bit, but once they got into light of territory, they sputtered a little bit, and the punt team is out. Fourth down and seven. And Brandon back out onto the field to kick this one away. Brandon takes the snap, kicks it. It'll hit at the 10-yard line and bounce into the end zone. So the Elida will start at their own 20-yard line with 2.18 left here in the third quarter. So the Redskins were able to wipe four minutes off the clock there on that last possession, but came away with nothing again. Four minutes off the clock, and they only moved the ball 30 yards. And, and that's really kind of what their offense is. You know, they don't want to be in, you know, a 40 to 35 type game. You know, they want to be able to score, um, you know, into the 20s, maybe high 20s. But that's kind of, especially with an explosive offense like Elida, where they'd like to be. You know, they want to control the clock. They want to have long possessions to keep that offense off the field of Elida. Clark Etzler remains off the field as Logan Alexander back out there again at the quarterback spot to start this possession. And it looks like they're working on Al, um, Etzler's legs over here on the sideline. Yeah, perhaps he's cramped up. Logan Alexander keeps it himself and he's gonna be swarmed under back inside the 20 yard line at about the 16. Could be a loss of about three or four on that play. Yeah, nice play there by the junior, number 34, Isaac Kirby for Wapakoneta. Well, the Carpenter, Coach Carpenter has uh, shown full confidence in Alexander's ability to run this offense. That's the second time he's run the ball. He's already thrown the ball once, and that was on the first play he came in. Two receivers wide near side to the left, one to the far side right. Alexander is back, fires it over the middle and incomplete. And a flag comes down. It looks like Stinson, his intended receiver, was on the ground. Yeah, there's definitely some contact there, whether it was intentional, inadvertent, and remains to be seen, but definitely two flags on the play, so no doubt about what the call is going to be. So they 
Pass interference against Wilpock. Penalty because you know, because it was going to be third and 12, um, you know, deep in their own a first and 10. That was a little bit of a hole of the Bulldogs. Definitely some contact over the middle by Dietering. And after the uh, pass interference, it moves the ball up to the 33-yard line. So first down and 10 for the Bulldogs. One thirty-seven left, third quarter. Going to be still a, a big possession here for Eli to see if they can capitalize on that big penalty. Two receivers wide, near side to the left. One to the far side right, and Alexander will roll out near side. Lobs it, Stinson all by himself at the 40-yard line. Gets up to the 45 and picks up the first down. Good, good job by the uh, Elida offense to give Stinson that big of a halo. Just to, you know, a very basic pattern. They had Poff running the go pattern up the sideline. He followed that in with the curl route. You uh, were clearing out the deep third defender and leaving that uh, cushion there in the middle. Basically, the only person that can defend that against his own defense is a linebacker coming up underneath. Obviously, a missed assignment somewhere because Stinson should not have that, that much space by himself if you're the Redskins defense. Handoff up the middle, White goes for about three yards up to the 49 yard line so a second down and seven coming up yeah not play we haven't see, we have not seen a whole lot of from uh, Elida so far just a quick handoff where it's not a zone read or anything like that it's just a out and out let's between the tackles let's go ahead and hit it quick and it looks like Desmond White is gonna be he comes up limping a little bit and a timeout gonna be taken by the officials here to get White off the field. It looks like it, this will be a short break. But if you're Coach Carpenter, you're fortunate that you didn't have to use one of your timeouts here in the third quarter. 49 seconds left third quarter. Elida on top 21 to 14. You're watching high school football on Game Face Ohio. <laughs> Are you hungry for some great food? Then come get some at CJ's Pizza. With fantastic prices and amazing food, you can't go wrong no matter what you order. Every Friday night during the football season, stop in and get an 18-inch two-topping pizza and 20 wings for $25 between four and close. CJ's Pizza has two locations, the Grandview Plaza in Wapakoneta and on Main Street in Crytersville. CJ's Pizza. Come get some. seconds left third quarter and the Bulldogs with a second down and seven handoff up the middle not much there up to midfield and into Redskin territory they may give him the 49 but not much there for the uh, for Sumter and now Sumter looks like he's injured yeah we we're just talking about that during the break uh, you know it, it's hot it's humid um, we're starting to get here, you know, close to the fourth quarter. You know, it, it's going to really test the conditioning of these uh, these players. They need to make sure that they're getting a lot of water. You mm -hmm. know, and hopefully this is just a cramp. Yeah, Sumter looked like he came up limping uh, earlier in the ball game on a defensive play, and um, we'll see how things turn out here with Sumter after the after he makes a carry up the middle. Third down play coming up for Elida. We'll take a break here as uh, the trainers take a look at Mr. Sumter. Elida with a 21 to 14 lead here at Kraft Stadium. And you're watching high school football on Touchdown Friday. All too often, roof system problems with your home or business are discovered after leaking or other serious damage occurs. Introducing Roof Care, Frost Roofing's elite roof management program, designed to protect against preventable repair and high replacement costs by performing periodic checks to your roofing system. Early discovery and correction of these problems will maximize the life of your roofing system, giving you the most out of your roofing dollar. Call Frost Roofing today and ask about Roof Care. Sumter helped off the field, and we'll hope that everything's okay with him. With 36 seconds left here in this third quarter, Elida will now take it, 
on a third down and five, and a flags comes down. You know, between the injury timeouts and uh, and flags, we've had about you know one real play here in the last five minutes of real game time. Penalty goes against the Redskins, and it marches it to the 44-yard line. And that should be a first down for Elida. I missed the uh, the infraction on that play. And I don't know whether one of the Redskins came across the line of scrimmage and made contact or not, but. Well, it, it, there, there was definitely no contact and the call came from the referee behind the play too. So a, a very odd person to call a penalty there. Mm -hmm. uh, but irregardless, it's a huge five yard penalty because it results in the first down and yep. the Bulldogs who are quickly becoming shorthanded, you know, they're three players down at the quarterback and two running back positions. Right. Uh, you know, that, that's a big pickup for a first down for them. Two receivers wide to the right, Stintz in the lone wide out to the near side. And Alexander will work out of the shotgun. There's the snap. Alexander lines it to Stinson on the left side, and he'll go down inside the 35-yard line to about the 33. So Alexander has come in, and this Bulldog offense has not missed a beat. You know, in, in any league, let alone the Western Buckeye League, it's really hard to fathom start having a starting sophomore quarterback do so well, then be injured, and have a freshman come in off the bench and then do so well. Mm -hmm. That'll be the final play of the third quarter. So as we head to the final frame, it is the Atlanta Bulldogs with a 21-14 lead over the Redskins here at Kraft Stadium. You're watching high school football on Game Face Ohio. When you think of protecting your assets, there's more than just your home and car. There's also your life and your family's future. Ensure those you love most are taken care of with protection planning. Life changes and opportunities occur. Look to someone you can trust with a customized approach. Minster Bank's Private Wealth Management Group, investment and insurance products. Not FDIC insured, may lose value, no bank guarantee. Welcome back to Kraft Stadium for the start of the final quarter of play here. The Bulldogs with a 21 to 14 lead. They have the ball first down and 10 at the Wapakoneta 33 yard line. And uh, Logan Alexander will lead the offense back out onto the field as Elida's starting quarterback, Clark Etzler, still on the sideline. Nursing what we believe is a cramp. Looks like he's trying to stretch that right calf. But Alexander has been performing well since coming into the ball game. He works out of the shotgun here, rolls out to the near side. He's gonna run it himself. He's up to the 30, tripped up as he gets to the 25 yard line. Schmergy coming over to put the clamp on that run. Yeah, nice decision by uh, Alexander right there. The linebacker that's kind of responsible for contain there, Brandon Miller, you know, got engaged with uh, the blocking back and he's able to just turn it up inside here. As you see here on this replay, you know, Miller gets caught up too much as opposed to just maintaining his position there on the line of scrimmage. You know, that would force Alexander to bubble a little bit more and not be able to make that big play. Seven yard run by Alexander brings up a second down and three. Out of the shotgun, he lines up with two receivers to his left, rolls out that way, gets some pressure, lobs it left side, and kind of threw it out there in a uh, open area. Polling was in the neighborhood, and so was Poff, but nobody really that close. Yeah, there, there was good coverage there. Wouldn't be surprised if that was just an intentional, hey, I'm not going to take any chances here. Uh, I'll just throw it in the middle of place. Incomplete pass. Third and three is still good down for our offense. If that was the the intention there, that's pretty heady play out of the freshman. Oh, it sure is. Uh, but you have to remember that high school has different rules. Um, you know, intentional grounding can be called a lot more liberally in the high school game more than, compared to the college and pro game. Third down and three now. White back in there at the uh, tailback spot after leaving on the last drive. 
They fake the handoff to him and fire it left side. That one incomplete. Looked like a miscommunication between Poff and Alexander. Yeah, Alexander was definitely looking for Poff to continue to go straight on that seam pattern, uh, which that would have been, you know, one of those quick hitters, the seam patterns when a slot receiver basically just runs straight down the field. So a fourth down and three now. And definitely in the position here in the field in high school football where you go for it. Uh, big play here in the uh, here in the football game. Ball at the Wapakoneta 26-yard line. Both both stands rising to their feet for this play. Two receivers wide to the far side left, pulling in motion to the near side to join Stenson. And the ball lobbed out there to pulling off his hand initially, but he was able to reel it in and fights his way inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. Good concentration by Poling. You know, well, what an athletic play and on a crucial situation. You know, obviously, a lot of times you see those ball just goes off his hands and then it's ball turned over, Wapak ball. Now the chains move. It's first and 10 from the 18, and Elida could put on a critical points on the board here on this possession. Here's, Here's another look at it. And you see Pulley doing it, just a fantastic job staying focused on that ball and pulling it in. Alexander out of the shotgun, two receivers to his left, and he rolls out that way, getting pressure. He's hit as he throws, and that one's picked off. Picked oh, off dropped. and dropped. Oh, my. Nearly picked off by Greavy at about the two-yard line, but he couldn't hold on to it. And, and that's what tremendous pressure does for you. Uh, Thomas Shinline, uh, the sophomore, had tremendous pressure on Alexander, and it forced him to be able to not step into the pass, and the ball floated on him, and a game-changing interception was almost the Redskins. Hmm. We will see how Alexander reacts now that he's taken a varsity hit there. Stinson, the lone wide out to the near side. Two receivers wide, far side to the left. White in the backfield with Alexander as he takes the snap. And that's going to be delay flags game. come down. Yeah, delay a game. Uh, you know, one of the advantages that we have, a lot of the stadiums here have uh, the, the play clock there in the, uh, in the end zones. We were able to see it go to double zero. Uh, just didn't get that off quite in time. It's going to bring up a second and 15. You know, a rare error by the South, by the freshman quarterback. Mm -hmm. So the ball now spotted at the 28-3 yard line. Second down at 15 with 10 and 10 and a half minutes to play here. Poling will be in there on the left side of the line. Two receivers outside of him on the left side. Stinson lines up wide to the near side. Alexander fakes the handoff to White. Fires it out right side. This one is picked off. Crawford down the near sideline. Moves to the center of the field. Evades another tackler. He's back across the 40. Has a blocker at the 50. To the 45 to the 40. And knocked out of bounds on the far side of the field. Inside the 40 at the 39-yard line. And what a difference maker has Johnny Crawford been on this. Miscommunication on the route. Looks like the quarterback was trying to throw the out while Stinson was running uh, the go on that situation. Crawford jumps on it. Makes the play. Makes up for the dropped interception before. And the Red Redskins are in business and have a tremendous chance here to get back into this ball game. Crawford has had an outstanding night. 54-yard touchdown catch, 80-yard kickoff return for a touchdown, and now an interception that puts the Redskins in great field position at the Elida 38-yard line. You know, that's a, that's a rare uh, triple header that you normally see. You know, long catch, long reception, kickoff return, and interception return in the same game. Out comes the Redskin offense. Gibson under pressure. He's going to be sacked, and a flag comes down. And I think Gibson was motioning for the face mask. Yeah, and that's kind of lucky. Uh, that time they were looking um, towards Hagemeyer here on uh, here on the um, as a wide receiver. Didn't appear that he got off on time. And then when Gibson saw that his timing was thrown off, you know the play kind of broke down from there. Lucky to get you know kind of bailed out there with you know the penalty. So that will move the ball all the way down to the 27-yard line. And a first down and 10 as we take another look at it. Here you see Gibson. There's the face mask. And down he goes. Yeah, and it's as good of a place as he's been and been around the ball the whole time. Uh, that time, Chance White's uh, for Elida. Just got his hand up in the wrong spot. Mm -hmm. 
So the ball down to the 27 yard line. And a timeout gonna be called here by the Redskins. We'll take a timeout as well. 21-14, Elida on top here in the fourth quarter. And you're watching high school football on TSC. When you see an orange truck, you think GA Windsor & Son Company. But the next time you see an orange GA Windsor & Son truck, we want you to think green. Why green? Because GA Windsor & Son are the original recyclers. Using a modern fleet of trucks, GA Windsor & Son Company collects food co-products from restaurants, food retailers, and food manufacturers in Ohio, Indiana, Michigan, and Kentucky. These food co-products are used to manufacture quality livestock and pet care feed ingredients. So the next time you see an orange GA Windsor & Son truck, think green. 9.58 remaining here in the fourth quarter, and Elida holding on to a tenuous 21-14 lead. The Redskins trying to cash in on a Johnny Crawford interception and a face mask penalty. Gibson under center, handoff, going to the right side. Inside the 25 down to the 22-yard line. Nice run there by Wendell. Now, Wendell again tacking the outside again of this defense, and another Bulldog is down. We can't really see the number from over here. And the trainer is over there looking at one of the Bulldogs. It's, it's been a night where the, the cramps have been affecting a lot of different players, and we'll see hopefully that that's just what this is and it looks like that is it so number 30 dominic painter fortunately he's up walking yeah one of the standout linebackers as we mentioned before this a lot of defense has a lot of returnees uh painter is one of them uh, out of their four linebackers kevin russell was an honorable mention wbl player last year at linebacker returnee quentin Poland, we've talked about him painter started last year and jesse wheeler is the other linebacker and he's made some plays tonight as well and Painter tried to return to the huddle there. I think that he does have to leave the field for at least one play. Second down and 10 coming up. So the cramps really piling up here for the Bulldogs. And you combine that with the mistakes that they have made with penalties, uh, turnovers, and so forth. You know, the Redskins really have to take advantage of these opportunities. Second down and five coming up. And the handoff goes to Smurgy off the right side. He's going to get up close to the first down marker. Solid carry by Smurgy. And Coach Fry starting to find something that he likes. You know, he did this last year, too, with a different combination. You remember uh, Chris Schwartz, you know, the standout guard for Walpock last year. And now he's starting to like that right side again with Mason City and Jared Carpenter. They've got a, a pretty good stable of backs because we've seen Wendell out there and Henderson. They kind of spell the same kind of back. Smurgy in the kind of the in-between tackle guy. But yeah. they do have some speed they can mix in there. First down and 10. And the handoff goes straight up the middle. And there is Brandon, who's a guy I didn't mention, but he goes up the middle for a decent gain. Yeah, and that's probably their best play, most successful play that they've had between the tackles. And a nice little trap play. And things are starting to go a little bit of Walpock's way. Ball spotted at the 13-yard line. So it's a second down and seven. But the Redskins have been in this territory twice before tonight. Handoff right side. And up to the 10 yard line is Smurgy, excuse me, Brandon. Brings him a third down. Yeah, and, and Walpock's been here before. Uh, you know, twice in the second quarter, they were down this situation uh, around the 10 yard line and, and came up empty both times, once on an interception and once uh, turning over on downs after they had a couple negative plays with a penalty and a sack. We'll see what they do here. Third down and four. Gibson under center, two backs behind him. He will keep it himself. Looking for the corner. He's going to be hit and stop. If he got back to the line of scrimmage, it was. It was fortunate. Yeah, I'm not sure if he did. Uh, Bulldogs not fooled at all. Quentin Poling leading the way there for a big stop, bringing up a fourth down. So the Redskins on their third, excuse me, this is their fourth trip into the red zone. The first one was a touchdown. The uh, next two, as you mentioned, nothing. And now a fourth down and five. And they need a big play here. A lot of fans coming to their feet. 
Gibson rolling out to the near side, looking, fires, and incomplete. Down at the five yard line, that ball thrown a little bit low and intended for uh, number 36, Chrysler. Could not come up with it. Yeah, trying to hit the, the big tight end on the out pattern like they've done earlier in the ball game off play action. Uh, here we see on the replay, uh, had just enough time there, kind of fluttered it out there. A catchable ball and on a fourth down, you obviously you'd want to be able to catch that. Obviously, you know, you'd want a better pass if you could. Um, another opportunity slips through the fingers of the Redskins and Elida still with all of their penalties, all their mistakes, all their cramps, all their injuries, still have the ball and a seven point lead halfway through this fourth quarter. They have to feel fortunate to still have that lead and Alexander will come out there to pilot this Bulldog offense again. Takes the snap, hand off up the middle white, not much there, still churning, but not going anywhere. He'll be stopped at the 14 yard line, gain of two. Well, it'll be kind of interesting to see how Coach Carpenter responds to, you know, the, the last two throws from his freshman uh, quarterback who's in the ball game have been an interception and near interception. Mm -hmm. You know, is he going to get a little bit more conservative with the play calling? Uh, because if so, Walpaw can really focus in on the running back, and, and that's not really the strength of Elida. You know, right. the strength of Elida is getting the ball to Stinson and Poff out in space um, through the air. Well, and in this uh, part of the field, you got to be very careful when you throw the ball to the outside. Hand off again, and up the middle, White. And not much there, gets up to the 15-yard line. Let's see if that was White. That was uh, number 22. The, the Shea Hughes. The Shea Hughes. Desmond White is coming into the ball game, mm -hmm. though, right now. So Hughes got the carry, but a third down and six coming up. So and this would be a big stop for the Redskins. If they can get a three and out and get good field position again, you know, they still put themselves in a, a good position to potentially uh, tie this ball game back up. But for the Redskins offense, there's only six minutes left and they don't move the ball that, that fast. Alexander rolling out, lobs it near side, caught by Paul. He's up across the 30, finds room to the middle of the field, still on his feet and brought down at the 46 yard line. So Poff has made some big plays tonight, and he comes up with one there. And what a clutch play. Deep in your own territory. It's third down. Things haven't gone very well. You know, Elida's been on 21 for a long time. Right. It's been a while since they've scored. It was one of the first plays in the second quarter, the last time that they scored. And you're depending on a freshman quarterback on a third down to be able to make a play like that. And then, depending on one of your veteran receivers, Nick Poff is able to add a lot more to it and get them out near midfield. Good look on the replay there. Alexander out of the shotgun, handoff, White up the middle, and he's going to be hit and stopped, but about a six-yard gain on the play. Yeah, nice blocking right there up front, and White holding the ball with two hands and really staying tight to his blocker to maintain possession and get a nice gain of five yards on first down. Closing in on five minutes to play in this game, and this is gut check time if you're that redskin defense. You really got to to put things together here and put a stop up. Yeah, you got to live in the moment. You know, you let a uh, big opportunity slip through on that third down conversion, but you can't, you know, feel sorry for yourself. You got to get the stop now. Alexander out of the shotgun, two receivers to his left, and again, White up the middle. He takes a pretty good lick, but he'll fall forward close to the first down. It looks like he'll just be a tad short, but still, Elijah's got to feel pretty good about two runs and end up with a third and one. Mm-hmm. Let's see what Coach Carpenter does in this situation. And the clock is very quickly becoming an enemy to the Wapakoneta Redskins. Yeah, we're at four and a half minutes now. Alexander looking to his left. He's got two receivers out there. One to the near side right. Here's the snap, and again, White up the middle. This time, the Redskins are ready for him. They stuffed that play back to the 49-yard line. Nate Valentine, the 5'7", 145-pound defensive lineman. Yes, I did say the height and weight correctly. <laughs> Shoots in there and makes an enormous play for the defense for the Redskins. Here's the replay, shooting in there on a third and one, coming in and making possibly the play of the ball game as the punt team takes the field for the Bulldogs. That's a big stop for the Redskins. Now you have to be careful of the, uh, of the fake punt in this situation. 
Uh, be, be pretty risky, right. be pretty risky. Wheeler back to kick it away. He stands at his own 40, low snap. He's gonna get to it, but a flag comes down and it looks like he's gonna be saved. Gonna be saved by a penalty here. Yeah, th there was some equipment situation going on with uh, with Elida, they're fixing the helmet and then the play was, uh, the ball was snapped and the punter wasn't ready. So it's going to be a five yard penalty uh, for a false start. Right. Oh, and the Elida fans are upset because uh, Wheeler was, got tackled in the backfield after that play was whistled dead. Well, that's part of the ball game. Wheeler took kind of a risk throwing that ball up there toward that official. But a fourth down and eight now. Low snap again, but he gets it. And the kick is away. It's a short kick. It's going to take a Wapa Kid out of bounds as uh, it'll be spotted dead at the 43 yard line. So outstanding field position for the Redskins. And again, a lot of mistakes on the line, a five yard penalty. And you know, that was about a 10 yard punt where it went almost straight up in the air. Right. Uh, you know, the Redskins just got to take advantage of this. You know, they've had opportunities, you know, around the 10 yard line and haven't been able to score. Um, you know, Elida, as good as they've looked, they've had a lot of mistakes. And you know, if the Redskins can't capitalize on this, uh, I'm not sure if they deserve the win. Gibson out of the shotgun, three receivers to his right, rolls that way, now he's gonna run it. Shakes off a defender, still looking to throw, still looking to throw, lobs it, and behind Grevy at the midfield, just about midfield. Yeah, Gibson did a tremendous job just to escape the, the pressure, and it took him a while to just to be able to, to adjust, to be able to throw an accurate ball. Grevy was open. Um, if he was able to just kind of get his steps um, correctly a little bit earlier, he could have got the ball to Grevy when Grevy had some space and could have caught the ball in and made a big play. Mm -hmm. As it sits, second down and 10. 3.13 left in this game. Elida still with the 21-14 lead. So this game is all we've kind of hoped it could be here. Gibson back to pass, gets some pressure, rolling out, still under pressure, can't get rid of it, and he's gonna be dropped back at the 22-yard line. He went backwards 21 yards and was sacked. Trent Long, a returning defensive lineman, a 6'1", 170-pound senior, um, for Elida ends up with the sack. And, you know, this is one where in college in the pros, they would have been outside the pocket and they just would have thrown the ball away. Mm -hmm. Well, they don't have that rule in high school. It would be intentional grounding. I, I kind of wish they would change that to make it consistent mm -hmm. uh, because that would have been an automatic throw away and it just would have brought up a, a third, you know, and, and 10 as opposed to now a third and 28. Under three minutes to play. This Elida crowd fired up by that. Last play, Gibson back to pass. Look, he rolls out near side. He's gonna be hit and hit again. Still on his feet, he goes down inside the 20 yard line at about the 16. Huge plays by the Atlanta defense on his last two, two snaps. Yeah, Trent Long was there again, but wasn't able to finish the, the play. But number 72, Brandon Kahn, uh, a six foot, 235 pound sophomore, was able to kind of finally wrestle down Gibson. Yeah, you see the replay. And Gibson, not a lot of time to get rid of the ball there. Brandon will put it away from inside his own five yard line as we go under two minutes to play. Ball will hit at the 50 yard line and roll down inside the 40 down to the 32 yard line, and that's where Elida will take over now. And for Elida, they just have 146 to burn. Well now at this stage of the ball game, Dan, uh, Walpock has two timeouts left so they can stop the clock twice. If Elida would pick up a first down, unless it's the first play, chances are that would probably be the end of the game. Um, mm -hmm. I, I would be surprised if they put the ball up in the air here at all. You know, take chances to see if you can get 10 yards in three plays with your running game. You know, perhaps have your quarterback run the ball, uh, but I would be surprised if the, the freshman, you know, puts the ball in the air in this possession. He has connected on some strong pass plays since coming in in relief of Etzler, but he has also thrown one interception. 
Hand off White, hit in the backfield, loss on the play of about three yards. Thomas Shinline has been in the backfield several times for Elida, making some big plays. Um, again, Coach Patterson, the defense coordinator for the Redskins, probably thinking pretty similarly, ex expecting you know some conservative play calling here from Elida. 141 left in the ball game. Elida with the 21-14 lead and a Wapak timeout. And we'll take a break. You're watching high school football on TSC. So, you think just because you're from a small town, you can't have everything that the big towns have? Wrong. At TSC, we offer over 300 digital cable channels to you right here in the heart of the Midwest. Surprised? Don't be. We're TSC. No contracts. No gimmicks. And everything is straightforward and down to earth. Order your digital cable package today and the HD is free. Now you're talking smart. Fourth quarter, 141 left in this ball game. Elida clinging to a 21-14 lead. And the Redskins have taken one of their remaining two timeouts to stop the clock with the 141 left as the uh, Bulldogs will try and run out the remainder of the clock here. Yeah, the most important things for the Redskins is they got to make the tackle, make it quickly. They have one timeout left. Uh, they might take it after this play. They might choose to take it after third down. Uh, irregardless, if they allow a big play, the game's going to be over. Alexander out of the shotgun. Two receivers to his right, one to the far side left. He is back, rolling out to the near side. He's going to run it. He is hit and dropped at the 31-yard line. And that will, uh, again, prompt the timeout from the Wapak side of the field with 134 left in this game, and we'll keep it here. The uh, In light of really, they've, they've had some missed opportunities to be still up by 21, or still up by seven. They should feel very fortunate to be in that position. Well, they've made a lot of mistakes. Um, and, and a lot of them, they can blame square on, them, on themselves. Um, you know, they've had some bad snaps, um, penalties, uh, poorly timed penalties. Um, but truthfully, you know, they've done just enough, um, especially on the defensive side of the ball, you know, to keep the Redskins out of the end zone. You know, as much as what the Redskins like to do, their two touchdowns have really come on a long pass play that was finished off with a one-yard touchdown run mm -hmm. and a kickoff return. They have yet to put together a long, drawn-out drive that finishes by putting the ball in the end zone like Coach Fry teams are, are known for. Even when they were given the interception return all the way back down to the 38-yard line on the Elida side of the field, they still weren't able to punch it in from there. No, but, you know, that's all water in the bridge right now. It's third and 12 right here. I, I would still, considering Walpuck's out of timeout, be surprised if they put the ball in the air because that would allow a lot more time. Even if you get tackled for nothing right here, you know, you're going to be able to give the ball with under a minute to go to Walpuck with a long field to go. You know, the, the percentages play would be to run the ball here. Alexander will work out of the shotgun with three receivers to his left on the far side of the field. It'll have White back there with him in the backfield. And he'll take the handoff to the near side, White. He'll be shut down as he gets out of bounds. No, the clock stays running across the 35 to the 36. Yeah, great play by White. He kind of felt that he's going to be tackled, and if he would have fought it, he would have been pushed out of bounds. So he immediately just kind of went to the ground just short of the sideline. Now the clock's going to run. Uh, there's 1-12 right now in running. They have yet to blow the ball in play, and then the 25-second clock will run. We're going to take another look at this play as he comes to the near side of the field. And it looked like it was a good call to call him down on the field of play. Again, a definite advantage right here with having the play clocks. Uh, the punt team knows exactly how much time is left to see if they want to call timeout with one second left on the play clock. Wheeler will call that timeout with 43 seconds left in this ball game. So through so. all the missed opportunities for the Redskins, they're out of timeouts, but at least they have the opportunity. They're going to get the, fo the football back right here. You never know if Crawford's back. He's made big plays so far. Right. You know, if he's able to maybe catch the ball in the air, maybe he makes a big play here on a punt return, give themselves some sort of semblance of field position, uh, and, and give themselves an opportunity to at least, you know, target the end zone a couple times. Well, on this night, Crawford has had the hot hand, so there's nobody, if you're the Redskins, that you'd want to put the ball uh, in his hands more than Crawford right now because he has shown 
the ability to explode on the open field. So this is always an interesting decision to make. You know, do you set up for you know, the punt return or do you go all out for the punt block? Mm -hmm. um, because if they have a really good punt, you know, even with a decent return, you still got a long ways to go. Uh, but you always risk, you know, the roughing the punter penalty, uh, which would effectively end the game. So it'll be interesting to see what uh, decision, you know, Coach Fry comes up with here. Complicating that decision a little bit for Coach Fry is that the last two snaps to the punter have been on the ground. That's an excellent point. And keeping that in mind, maybe you do want to go after that punter. It looks like they're in punt safe here. Stands back at his own 30-yard line. Wheeler at his 25. Good snap this time, and Wheeler puts the foot in, and it's blocked. The Redskins knock it down, and it'll be covered at the 28-yard line. What a tremendous play, and you know, this game hasn't been well played, but it's been a very exciting game. It's had a little bit of everything, and what we're going to see here in the last 36 seconds after this tremendous punt block, hopefully we get to see a chance who, who actually made the block. I believe, if I had to pick, I believe it was uh, Shinline. Shinline or Brandon Miller, number 33. One of those two, um, well, Brandon Miller was, was definitely close to do that. Um, either way, the ball's on the 28-yard line. you got no timeouts, but you still have a significant amount of time, and this is going to be a great way to end the first weekend of the Western Buckeye League. Gibson has not had a lot of success throwing the ball on the last possession. He was sacked twice. He lobs it out to Crawford on the right side. Crawford will throw it, and it's going to be picked off at the five-yard line. Crawford's throw down the right sideline. Intended for Grevy, I believe. I think it was Morgan. Cody Morgan, actually. Right. Morgan was behind his defender. Uh, you know, Crawford has made plays all night. Unfortunately, you know, he just didn't have enough on that last pass um, to be able to make to make the, just a fantastic finish right there. Um, you know, unfortunately for the Redskins, um, the, the Bulldogs were able to make that last interception. Looks like that's going to be the ball game. Well, that was, uh, and here you take a look at it. Crawford lining up and lobbing it down the right side. And that one picked off. He was looking for Morgan. And, and there's going to be a timeout for Elida, just to make sure, because there's always a chance if you fumble the snap here, the game couldn't be over. Uh, but you just have to snap the ball once, kneel on it, and, you know, without any timeouts, the game will be over. Um, excellent play call there by the Redskins. Um, you know, it, it, it was there. Um, you know, if we saw the replay and kind of run that back, Morgan immediately, you know, had a lot of space behind him. If he was mm -hmm. able to kind of get, you know, all the, the ball kind of on the line a little bit more, um, you know, would have had an excellent chance of possibly getting a touchdown and then with an extra point tying up the ball game. Yeah, the, the ball came out a little wobbly and kind of hung up there about uh, three or four yards short of uh, where it needed to be for Morgan to take it into the end zone. Well, Dan, for the third so, year in a row, these two teams have really delivered in a very entertaining football game. Yeah, it's been a roller coaster ride for this Elida crowd because with the blocked punt, everybody was, was down over here on this side of the field and one play later with the interception right back on their feet. There's the snap and the knee. And that will do it. So Elida, despite a lot of mistakes, comes away and holds on to a 21-14 win here at Kraft Field. The Redskins couldn't overcome some sputtering on the offensive side. They made some critical mistakes deep in the line of territory and come up short by a touchdown. Yeah, but both teams are going to look at this game film and have a lot to work on. Mm -hmm. uh, and you'll get that with early season football games. Unfortunately, it just happens to be two of the better teams in the Western Buckeye League, and one team is going to be 1-0, one, one team is going to be 0-1. Uh, a lot of football left in this season, uh, but both teams have to look at it that they've got a lot of mistakes they need to clean up and, right. and improve to do. Well, we'll come back and wrap this one up. Elida with the win here tonight. They improved the 2 and 0. The Redskins fall to 1 and 1. Elida with the 21-14 win. We'll come back and wrap this one up. You're watching High School Football on Game Face Ohio. Are you hungry for some great food? Then come get some at CJ's Pizza. With fantastic prices and amazing food, you can't go wrong no matter what you order. 
Every Friday night during the football season, stop in and get an 18-inch two-topping pizza and 20 wings for $25 between four and close. CJ's Pizza has two locations, the Grandview Plaza in Wapakoneta and on Main Street in Crytersville. CJ's Pizza. Come get some. Back here at Kraft Stadium in Elida, and a good finish to a ball game uh, that was not the prettiest game at times. So uh, Elida coming away with the 21 to 14 uh, victory, and the Redskins got a touchdown right out of the gate in the second half on an 80-yard kickoff return by Johnny Crawford that got them back to within a touchdown, and it it looked like uh, like in the first half that the the Redskins were back on track, but Elida were able to shut them down through the rest of the second half. Yeah, a, a very exciting game. Uh, you know, for being a well played game. You know, it wasn't the most well-played game, but there was a lot of individual plays, um, you know, a lot of big plays, special teams, interceptions. It was a very fun game to watch for the fans and, and to broadcast. And both of these teams are going to be very good along the ways, but they've got a lot of mistakes they need to kind of improve upon as the season goes on. Right. They lied at 2-0, uh, but as you mentioned, they still have a lot of things that they can correct uh, in the film room on Monday. Well, they have the film room, then they need to get healthy. You know, they had a lot of guys there with cramps there in the second half, you know, playing with the backup quarterback and, and you know, running a lot of committee, um, running back by committee there in the second half. So, you know, I would look for them to try to get healed up, you know, work on their conditioning a little bit. Uh, but, you know, they have to clean up those situations where, where they don't have those silly penalties, where they're not ready, uh, clean up some of those snaps, and, and they could be a very dangerous team in the Western Buckeye League. Watching this game, Paul, kind of hard to, to gauge which way the Redskins offense is going to go because they they struggled in in both the spread and uh in their regular uh running you know running attack yeah as we mentioned you know their, their two touchdowns came on a special teams play and then you know a short touchdown run after a, a long pass which is not normally going to be their mo uh you know i would look for them to try to you know get back to basics and really work on improving that being said they may not meet uh a defense as good as they met tonight well, we'll be back in Wapak next weekend as the uh, Redskins will host Bath, and we'll have that ball game for you here on TSC. As we go out tonight, I want to thank all of the uh, members of the crew that helped make the game possible. And for Paul Sadler, I'm Dan Hearn. You've been watching high school football on TSC.